Superman finds himself in a mysterious white void. The last thing he remembers is taking Brainiac through a black hole during the events of Superman Doomed. A disembodied voice explains that Brainiac led Superman here and a massive version of the villain appears before Clark, saying the hero always demands the villain's attention. The giant Brainiac claims that all versions of this villain serve him and leads Superman to this place as part of a grand experiment on a scale far too large for Clark to even comprehend. The hero suddenly finds himself imprisoned by a machine, while Brainiac explains that this is where he watches Clark die. Again and again, under a different circumstance and story, Clark dies over and over. Brainiac isn't responsible for these deaths, but he watches them to learn, and to find a version of Superman that would submit to the villain's own purposes. Clark tries to escape, but to no avail. This version of Brainiac reveals his full form, a massive creature that dwarfs Superman, and the villain claims to have what he wanted out of this Superman. He knows about the worlds and cities of Clark's home in the mainstream New 52 universe, and seems to have been satisfied by this encounter. Brainiac vanishes, while Superman is left imprisoned and alone. In a rage, Clark manages to destroy his restraints and vows to return home. He escapes prison and finds himself on an empty and desolate planet. Using his superior vision, he can tell that nothing is around for millions of miles and that there aren't even stars in the sky. He sees a figure in the wasteland and chases after it, but this person eludes him. Superman is then abruptly approached by another version of Brainiac. When Clark demands to speak to the version that he encountered earlier, this iteration claims that the true Brainiac has left. Superman knows that Brainiac is heading to his home of Metropolis, but this version claims to have many different Metropolises and other cities of Earth. Changing form, this other version of Brainiac is confident that he can find Superman a suitable home among his collection, but this isn't good enough for the hero. As this version of Brainiac shuffles among the many different forms the villain has taken over the years, he explains that they exist outside of the flow of time. He states that he is not Brainiac, but rather a sentient expression of the planet they are currently on. This planet was placed here and altered by the original Brainiac to serve as a home for cities that were nearly destroyed in their original timeline. Here, the planet would look over the cities and judge them for their merit. The sentient being claims to have many cities and refuses to grant them freedom until they prove themselves worthy. This sends Superman into a rage, but he is unable to wage battle against the entire planet. The entity claims that its master, the true Brainiac, left for the New 52 Earth some time ago and has not returned. Clark doesn't belong here, so the planet dismissively expels him. As Superman leaves, the Entity decides that his master made a mistake. The time for judgment is here, and this being will have to determine which cities are worthy enough to return to the universe, and which shall be destroyed. Let only the strong survive. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden and this is my recap and review of Convergence number zero. And so it begins. So we've got two big events in both Marvel and DC coming up and it's time to start things off with Convergence. DC has a lot riding on this one. With the new 52 sales falling, the company is looking to use this event to show a new change in direction and tone. Were they successful? Well, in my eyes, not really. Oh sure, there are positive aspects of the comic that I'll get into, but for the $5 cover price, I really don't think this comic is worth your money at all. For those not familiar with the current DC Universe, this is going to be a very confusing issue. You're apparently supposed to know about Superman's Doom storyline, and assuming everybody has read those comics is completely asinine. Nobody should be expected to read a bunch of online articles to understand what happens in Convergence, but I guarantee you that's the case for most if not all casual readers of this issue. Convergence is hardly going to attract anyone new if you have to know so much about the New 52 and the content preceding it to understand the story. 
This comic's plot was distorted and not at all well paced. The whole experience feels like a mess, with Superman floundering around with various versions of Brainiac and basically throwing a temper tantrum at his situation. The Clark I know is very out of character in this story and it works against this comic quite harshly. This story also serves as setup to Convergence, and if this event does indeed center around Brainiac, it's a decent setup overall for what could be a fun event. My favorite aspect of this comic has to be us getting to see the different versions of Brainiac in action, and they are all really well drawn. On the whole, this art is really good and the best selling point of this comic, and it is definitely worth being commended. We also get a lovely guide at the end of this issue going over all the different worlds involved with Convergence, which should prove helpful and was a pretty good idea for them to do. But some pretty pictures do not make this comic worth your time. I think everyone will be better off skipping this and hoping for a better comic with issue number one. Because there isn't much to issue zero aside from some empty hype. DC Comics increasingly feel like they're all built up to bigger things that never seem to come and lack anything meaningful or substantive in between. This was supposed to be a new direction for the publishing company, but it reeks of being more of the same. I didn't realize how disappointing I found issue zero until I had some time to think about it. On my first reading of this comic, I did kind of like it and there are still elements of the story that I find pretty cool, but instead it feels like where DC could have shown us a new creative energy and dynamic or something big and exciting, they're instead just focusing on doing more of the same. The second I start using my brain, this comic falls apart and it becomes obvious, to me at least, that it isn't very good. I put some hope in the fact that issue number one might be better and that this story will give us more value as we get further into the crossover and the story unfolds a little better. But for now, I do not recommend you check out this comic for yourself. It's okay, but for $5 it is nothing special and in my eyes not at all worth the price. And this bums me out so much. I wanted Convergence to be great. Now I'm not even sure if it'll be good. This wasn't the worst comic overall, but I think it was a pretty lame start for this big and epic event. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our website, Facebook, and Twitter pages to stay updated on all the latest. And finally, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.